Hello everyone, this is Teo. In this video, I'm going to talk about the things and features you should look out for in a pen display before you get one to create your digital art. Now this is going to be a two-part video. This first video will talk about the basic features of pen displays and the second video, I will show you how to use a pen display. So a pen display essentially is a monitor that you can draw on with a stylus or a pen. And because it's a monitor, you do have to connect this to a computer and sometimes a power source in order to use it. Some of the pen displays can be quite small and very thin like this particular one which almost looks like a tablet, but it's not a tablet. It's a pen display which means it's a monitor which means you have to connect this to a computer to use it. So currently I have this pen display connected to my laptop. You can connect this to a desktop as well and use this as a main display. If you connect this to a laptop, you can use a dual screen mode. So right now I'm actually using mirror mode. So both displays are showing the same thing. So it uses one cable that splits into three. It is important to find out which video port your computer has. So if your video port is different from the cable, then you will need to buy an additional adapter to convert the cable connection to whatever port that's on your computer. This USB is for data. In this case, it's for your computer to detect the pen. Pen displays come in different sizes. This particular one is 15.6 inches, which is a really comfortable size to work with. There are pen displays as small as 10 inches and the big ones can go up to as big as 27 inches or even larger. The price of the pen displays usually is associated with the size of the pen display. So the smaller pen displays will be cheaper. So for example, with this 15.6 inch pen display, this is how the display size compares to a piece of A4 paper. You can see it's almost the same size as this A4 paper, except it's wider. I happen to have this 12 inch pen display here. And this is almost the size of the A4 paper, but there are bezels here. These are the bezels. So the actual display is actually much smaller. And when you consider the pallets that take up space on the pen display, the remaining drawing area is going to be much smaller. So the size that I usually recommend people to get would be around 13 inches or bigger. Smaller pen displays have smaller user interface elements such as the menu bars, icons, the text. So if you work on your pen display for long periods of time, it's not going to be that comfortable for your eyes to look at all the smaller uh, user interface elements. So for smaller pen displays like this, these are good for people who have limited table space, who have limited budget, or for people who are not going to be working on pen displays for long periods of time. Pen displays can come with physical shortcut buttons. It can be on one side or on both sides. Some pen displays don't have physical shortcut buttons. Now these buttons here, they can be customized to specific keyboard shortcuts using the driver that's provided that you can download from their website. These buttons can be quite useful. You may see some pen displays with scroll bars or slider bars or with the scroll wheels. Those are great for changing brush sizes. So with this particular pen display, if I need to change the brush size, there are two ways to go about it. So I can keep pressing the button. You can see the number, it would increase incrementally. Or I can press down and hold and the number will drop incrementally. But this is actually quite slow. If I were to use my own keyboard, shortcuts on a proper keyboard you can see i can press and hold and the number and the brush size it jumps it increases very quickly even if your pen display doesn't have that many buttons so for example with this one it only has six buttons it's not a big deal because you can always 
use keyboard shortcuts on your keyboard. Most pen displays nowadays come with a matte drawing surface which has this nice texture for you to draw on. You can see this matte uh, textured surface, it has anti-glare so at certain angles when you have reflections on the display it's going to create this white haze that's going to affect the colors and contrast but usually if you are working at home uh, when you're facing the pen display like this there are no lights behind you then the colors are going to look great now the matte surface can come in two forms it can be a matte surface screen protector or it can be a matte surface glass with a matte screen protector it's just a piece of plastic over the glass you may be able to scratch the screen protector if you're someone who draws very forcefully with a lot of pressure then it's going to be more likely for you to scratch the matte screen protector Matte screen protectors are replaceable but uh, replacements may not be sold by all the pen display companies so if you need replacements then um, before you buy the pen display check out the manufacturer's website to see if they actually do sell replacement screen protectors personally for me I don't mind scratches so if there are scratches on my screen protector um, I'll just leave it as it is anyway most of the pens that come with pen displays nowadays they are very sensitive so you don't really have to press down that hard to get a line so with this particular brush for example it's actually a very thick brush but I can still produce very thin lines just by drawing very lightly one downside to matte screen protectors is they can introduce color noise that is not surprising that's just the way it is with matte screen protectors but um, usually the color noise is not like that obvious you do have to look out for the color noise in order to see it so for example with uh, this matte screen protector you can see the colors here they are still looking really nice speaking of colors you should get a pen display with good color reproduction I recommend you get those pen displays with at least 100% sRGB color support and also get pen displays that have IPS panels so that when you view the pen display from different angles you don't see the colors uh, shift and try to get a pen display that can produce at least 200 nits of brightness the brightness is usually listed on the manufacturer's website however that's the maximum brightness so in the real world in reality the brightness is usually lower than what's specified this particular pen display does not have any buttons that can go into the OSD menu to let you adjust the different display attributes like brightness, contrast, color temperature and other stuff so to adjust those attributes you have to do it through the driver now with this tablet it has buttons to change the brightness but that's about it with the Windows driver for this particular pen display these are the different display attributes you can adjust with the Mac driver these are not available if you are using Mac OS I probably would recommend you get a pen display where the OSD menu is built into one of the buttons so that you can adjust this easily some pen displays may come with a stand included to help you prop up the stand and if there is no stand included I highly recommend you get a stand it can be a tablet stand or a pen display stand because if you don't have a stand and you use your pen display like this flat on the tabletop for long periods of time it's not good for your posture propping up the pen display like this at a more comfortable angle allows you to work more comfortably and it's also better for your posture in the long run try to get a stand that allows you to adjust at different angles so for example with this particular stand you can only have it at this 
angle. With this stand that I have here, I can actually uh, have the display almost vertical like this, or I can prop it down to whatever angle I like. Now that I've covered the physical aspect of the pen display, let's talk about the driver and some drawing software. The driver is important because it will determine the overall drawing performance and experience you will get with the pen while drawing with the various drawing software from your computer. So the driver also allows you to customize a lot of things like the pressure curve of the pen, the shortcut buttons on the pen and also on the side of the pen display. You can customize specific keyboard shortcuts and some drivers will allow you to calibrate the monitor as in calibrate it in such a way that the cursor beneath the pen tip will appear directly beneath the pen tip because sometimes uh, out of the box there can be some misalignment or there can be some parallax so monitor calibration will correct the misalignment and parallax and make the cursor appear directly beneath the pen tip if you are left-handed make sure the driver allows you to rotate the orientation to 180 degrees if you have the budget try to get a pen display with a laminated display so there is usually a gap between the drawing surface and the actual LCD beneath. With a laminated display, that gap is going to be very small, very minimal. So when you're drawing, it's going to look like the line is appearing directly beneath the pen tip. Most pen displays nowadays are laminated, which is great. If you happen to buy a pen display that is not laminated, um, don't worry, you can actually use the driver provided to calibrate the pen display to reduce the gap. The combination of calibrating the pen with the cursor and also having a laminated display is so that you can draw with accuracy. If you have a pen display that has a big gap between the drawing surface and the LCD beneath, um, there is parallax or there is misalignment. Joining lines like this, it's going to be difficult. So if you have um, those pen displays with misalignment, chances are when you're drawing, you're going to get things like this you won't be able to join the lines perfectly and when you place your lines they are not going to be where you want them to so having a laminated display really helps with accuracy most of the pens nowadays support at least 2000 levels of pressure sensitivity this particular one supports up to 8000 levels of pressure sensitivity Another thing to look out for is whether or not the pen supports tilt sensitivity. Good tilt sensitivity is where the shape of the cursor will follow the direction of the pen. Tilt sensitivity will work together with pressure sensitivity. Another thing to look out for is whether or not there are any bricks when you are drawing with tilt brushes. So here you can see I drew this circle. Now with certain pen displays, sometimes when you draw like this and when the pen changes direction from pointing up to pointing downwards, there can be a break here. Or when the pen changes direction from left to right, there can be a break here. Those pen displays obviously do not have the best tilt sensitivity support. Let's talk about drawing software. Now, if you have a drawing software that you use like all the time, your primary drawing software, you have to make sure that that software is compatible with the driver of the pen display. If you don't have any specific drawing software that you need to use, you can always switch around between different drawing software and this is not really a problem so for example um, this drawing software that i'm using this is midi bank paint pro 
with certain pen displays uh, when it comes to drawing curves here it's actually really smooth by the way or drawing circles uh, with Medibank Paint Pro on some pen displays sometimes there can be some stray strokes like that here it looks fine so I have to simulate the stray strokes for you guys and sometimes when drawing the lines may be too wobbly this can be due to the driver or this can be due to the quality of the pen and the pen display um, so for example if you see this sort of line quality with the primary drawing software that you are using obviously that pen display is not going to be suitable for you because you cannot guarantee that the company will come up with a driver fix in the future to fix this sort of behavior I have reviewed many pen displays on my blog and also on my YouTube channel before oops this is not a touch screen pen display by the way there are touch screen pen displays out there but they are going to be more expensive compared to the non touch screen pen displays uh, what I'm trying to say is I have reviewed many pen displays and as much as possible I will always try to test them with various drawing apps because you won't know how the pen display performs until you really test them with the various drawing apps so sometimes they can have certain glitches with very specific drawing software I believe I have covered all the features you should look out for when you buy a pen display so if you guys have any questions uh, do let me know in the comment section below if you need pen display recommendations uh, you can actually check out the long list of pen displays that I have reviewed on my blog all the reviews come with a list of pros and cons so you can compare against different brands very easily very quickly all right thanks for watching this video i hope it's helpful see you guys in the next one bye